Welcome to ShareWell Tutorials by Beyond 20. This video will demonstrate how to create and use XML collections to work around the rule of two in ShareWell Service Management. A typical use case for this solution is a service request which includes a table of items that have been requested. Each child item may need a separate approval and once approved they may need a task created to fulfill the service request. However, because of the rule of two in ShareWell, you cannot walk through the child object called items and create another child object like task or approval. The solution to this challenge is the use of XML collections. So what is an XML collection? Well, an XML collection is a stored value or variable that contains XML formatted text and set to the data type of XML collection. Shareable offers a step through collection action in one steps to get values from each item or row in the collection. So let's begin. In this use case, we have a service request which has an underlying table called BPCS access. And these are items that the user has requested in their service request. And as you can see uh, in the table down here, we have a module and a program, and then we have whether or not there's a task required, which all of these items are requiring a task, but you'll also see not all of them require a secondary approval. So in the first case, once the primary approval is approved, there will be a task created to create the module ACP, but we won't have a, another task created for the underlying programs until the secondary approval has. The other issue or challenge here is we need to be able to create multiple approvals, one for each row that requires a secondary approval. And of course, you can't do that with the rule of two by just stepping through the BPCS access because you can't create an approval from BPCS access that would be related back to the service request. Likewise, once they're approved, you wouldn't be able to create the tasks by stepping through BPCS access unless you had another method of doing so. And so what is that method? It's an XML collection. So the first one step we're gonna show you is the one step that will create an approval for each item that requires a secondary approval. And we'll start by stepping through our child object where we have the secondary approval is not empty. So that means that we have an approver for that. And when we step through this, we're going to create two variables. One is a variable that just tells us what we're doing that we can use later on for our approval. So this is our app details. This is what we're gonna place in the approval object itself. And then here is the update variable XML list. So this XML list just has a text type because it's going to be the contents of the XML collection. It still gets formatted just like an XML. And in this case, we're going to use attributes. So we have an approval and each approval has these attributes, which are the approver ID, the details, and there's where you see the um, item app details went right there. Incident ID is our variable for the incident ID from the parent incident. Uh, the rec ID is our, our child object's rec ID. And the status over here is going to be waiting. The parent type is, or parent type name is incident. And this is a field from the approver um, ID in the child table of BPCS access. So each one of the data points that comes from the child table BPCS access can be placed directly in here. The details that are coming from the incident had to be taken in a variable prior to this. So this will create a list and each row will be concatenated with this ending tag here. Once we have that, then we create our XML collection. And our XML collection is simply a starting and ending tag and in this case we called it list, contained inside the starting and ending tag for the collection is our XML list. The next piece we'll do is we're going to then step through that collection. So it's the XML list, and then we have to tell it what the name of the variable is that we're going to use. So for each item, we're going to call it current item. Once we step through that list, we can create an approval. And we're going to create the approval and we're going to populate it with fields from the attributes inside 
our current item. So our current item gets placed here, and then we have to put a modifier on it. And the modifier, in this case, because we use attributes, is real easy. It's simply string from attribute. In this case, we have a prover ID for our rec ID for BPCS. Our modifier is, again, string from attribute, BPCS rec ID. Our deadline was a custom expression based on today's date or the current date and time. Details, again, that comes from our current item. String from attribute, it's details in that case. And our incident ID is also another string from item incident ID. So now that approval is now created, and each one of the items that needed an approval gets created. So there you have it. That's a very simple way of creating multiple approvals or multiple tasks, because we'll go back through and do the same exact thing once it's approved to create the task. So we'll show you that one up here. Once it's approved, we do the same exact piece right here. So we're going to go through our BPCS access. We're going to look for our secondary approved because we've already stepped through and, and made it so from the approval ID that happened before. So all the items that are approved can now be have a task created for them. So we go through, build our XML. In this case, we use task and then the attributes for the task, the title, the description, the owned by team. And then we concatenate that with the previous uh, rows for the XML collection we're going to create. We come out of the step through uh, child object and we create our XML list collect our XML collection again. Again, it's just list tags from our task XML. And then we're going to step through that collection. Again, we called it current item. And for each item in our collection, we create a new task. And again, we use the same current item with the modifier of string from attribute. And that's how you get around the rule of two when you need to create child objects based on values in another child object of the same parent object. I hope this has been an informative video for you. If you like the content of this video, please feel free to comment below. And also, please subscribe to our channel, Beyond 20.